So in this video, we're gonna walk through the latest features in ESDE 3.3.0. The first big one we're gonna focus on is a new feature called the Game Importer. Now the Game Importer essentially allows you to have a built-in tool for importing applications and maybe Steam games into ESDE. Um, it's designed primarily for native apps, Steam games, Android games, um, desktop applications, things like that. It's not intended to be used for emulated games. That's covered kind of elsewhere in our documentation. So think of this as primarily a way to get in those like desktop applications or Steam games that you might've had, had to add manually before, more of an automated way to bring that content into ESD and display it. Um, big shout out to ES App Launcher on Android. It was a big inspiration for the work we did here. The cool part though is now it's natively built into ESDE. Um, so I have two devices on screen right here. The first one is a Windows PC. And over to the left here is an Android uh, device from Retroid. Um, and yeah, with these two devices, I'll basically show you how this works across uh, all applications, all devices that ESD can be used on. PC will show you basically how this could be used on Windows, Linux, and Steam Deck and Mac. And then Android has some specific functionality that we'll call out in a, in a second as we go. So let's first look at the Windows version. So you're gonna to get to the new game importer by pressing up the start menu and open up the main menu, go to utilities. And then in utilities, you're gonna see a new option here called game importer. Now on Windows, it's a, or essentially PC uh, devices, it's a pretty simple list of options you have here. Option one is import to system, and option two is remove entries. So import to system, what that does, when you select a system here, essentially this is determining where the imported uh, applications are gonna go once they're done. So in this case, if I selected desktop applications and then click start, any applications that I select here will then be imported into the desktop application system when I'm done. And if I select Valve Steam and click start, you'll notice that it shows a subset of, of, of uh, applications, specifically games only from Steam. So that's something unique to the kind of PC versions of this. So let's start first with the Valve Steam and then talk about the remove entries option here. Now remove entries has two options. One is never and one is all unselected. Essentially what these do, if I were to click start here and then select Fez and No Man's Sky and then import, when I press A, you're gonna see a dialogue up here that said import two entries. And then when I press back, you're gonna see ESD refresh and we're gonna see a new system here called Steam with Fez and No Man's Sky. So what this is doing behind the scenes is basically importing the URL files that exist or shortcuts for Steam games directly into ESD's Steam folder so that you could launch these games directly from ESDE. Now there was that option though for remove entries. So if I set this to all unselected instead and press start, you're gonna get a warning here. And a warning essentially is telling you that anything you don't select on this screen will be removed from the system you're importing things into. So remember, I just imported Fez and No Man's Sky. So now I'm gonna select Fez only and click import. And if I refresh ESDE and go back to Steam, you're only gonna see Fez. So that effectively removed No Man's Sky from the list just by unselecting it. So, you know, depending on your use case, essentially you're gonna choose either all unselected or never. Um, if you're importing things for the first time, never is pretty, pretty straightforward. Just do that and you're good to go. Um, and if you want to, let's say, remove, remove games that you weren't using anymore, uh, all unselected would be a good way to do it automatically from within ESDE. Um, the thing to note here though is behind the scenes, all this is doing is it's copying the shortcut files to the folder that ESD looks in to display games within its interface. So pretty straightforward. Cool thing about this too, is that you could also now scrape games here. So if I scrape for Fez, and then click that. Let's see, we should get essentially Fez looking pretty nice directly in ESD. And if I were to press start there, it would launch Steam and then launch Fez automatically. So it's a really nice way to get uh, Steam games kind of natively built in. 
Um, so that's the game importer on uh, PCs. So that will cover Linux, Windows, and Mac installs, as well as Steam Deck. Let's look at an Android instead. So on Android, there's a few additional options here. Uh, on import to system, you have Android apps, games, and emulators, essentially these being the systems that you can import games into on Android. Uh, remove entries is the same two options, so it works the same here on Android. And then you have this option called import media. What import media will do is it'll try to get media from the application you're pulling in. Let's say it's logo or banner image and use that as default media when it's importing it. Um, that way you don't have to scrape. So I'm gonna show you that in a second. But the other option I wanna call out on Android is this option called only include app categorized as games. Now what this will do is on Android, there's some APKs that have metadata that describe them as a game. So if you were to select this and turn this on and then click start, it's only gonna display applications that are marked as games. And this could be an easy way to do something like Android games and then try to only import things that are games and make it pretty easy to see your full list of things. So let me turn that off though for a second and go to, I wanna end, import some Android apps. So Android apps, I'm not gonna remove entries. I'm not importing media. Again, I'll show you that in the next round and click start. And this is gonna present me essentially a list of Android apps that I can, that I can include. So in my case, because I'm doing Android apps, I wanna bring in my file manager. Uh, let's see, my settings app, my sync thing, and let's say YouTube. And then I'm gonna click import here. And you'll see, again, notification at the top. And if I go back and scroll to the left here, I now have a new Android app system and I have those four apps in place. So now let's do the same thing, but we're gonna do it for, let's see, emulators instead. So utilities, game importer, I wanna import to system emulators. And in this case, I'm gonna turn on import media and media target type, what that indicates is when we import, let's say media from that APK, what are we gonna save the media file as? Are we saving it as a screenshot? Or are we saving it as a, uh, you know, uh, a box cover, things like that. So this will really depend on the theme you're using. So in the case of uh, the theme I'm using now, it prioritizes kind of screenshots for the view that I'm using. So I'm gonna use screenshots. Uh, I have import media turned on. Uh, I wanna import banners or logos if available. I think that's useful. And I'll leave overwrite media files off because this is the first time I'm running it. So if I click start, now, what I'm gonna do here is select all of my emulators. So in this case, I'll select Dolphin. Let's select another SX2, PPSSPP, uh, RetroArch, and I'm gonna click Import. Import of four entries. And now when I go back, you'll see it refresh, and I'll have a new entry here for emulators. And you can see it imported the banner for the screenshot on each of these. So yeah, that's how the game importer essentially works on both Android and, and PCs. Uh, hope that helped. And yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about some of the other things that are included in 3.3.0. Previously, we used to have a setting here called Game List on Startup. And that's been now changed to two new options called Startup View and System on Startup. Essentially what this allows you to do is choose what system you want the ESD to boot into when it starts and then also to choose whether the law starts on the game list or the system view. Let's take a look at an example. So in this case, I have the system startup set up to last played because um, I like to have it boot into the, the, the game list for the games that I'm currently playing, that type of thing. And I currently wanna change this to the game list view. So with those two settings, when I exit ESDE and then restart, it should boot directly into the game list. But if I wanted to boot to the system view instead, I would do this. Let's say I wanna have it start on my now playing list and then have that be the system view instead. So let's exit ESDE and then restart. 
and that should boot directly to the system view, but focused on the now playing system. So it gives us some flexibility in like how you, how you start VSDE. Another nice quality of life feature we've added is the ability to see API statistics for Screen Scraper directly in the scraping window. So for example, here I have TurboGrafx CD. I have some games I want to scrape. And now when I press start here, you should see in the bottom left here, it's going to tell me how many uh, kind of API calls I have left. Sorry, it's not it's focusing properly. There we go. So that shows up when you're scraping now directly in the UI. The last quality of life feature to talk about is in input device settings. There's a new setting here called input device notifications. And this basically allows you to turn off the notifications when you're plugging in a new controller or uh, unplugging it. Uh, so in this case, if I set it off, if I, were to um, if I were to plug a controller into this device, it wouldn't show the controller notification on screen. So if you like to turn those off, you can do that here in uh, and put the by settings now. So those are some of the major changes in the latest version of ESDE. There's a change log I'll link in the description below, which will list all the other major changes. For example, on Android now, you all have access to the Model 3 emulator through MAME, so that's a really cool one. Uh, but yeah, take a look through the change log, and uh, that should show everything that's changed in this release. If there's any questions, just let us know. Thanks so much.